Several years ago, I visited a large automobile dealership and looked at many new automobiles. One in particular caught my eye, a convertible sports model with all of the fancy equipment you could imagine. It had push button everything and more horsepower than a division of cavalry. How I would have enjoyed a car like that when I was in high school. It occurred to me that you of high school age may be interested in owning such a car. Will you imagine something with me? Imagine that I have decided to present a typical teenager a car such as this, and you are the one who has been chosen. On the evening of the presentation, I see that you are not quite financially able to run such a car, so I generously include free gas, oil, maintenance, tires, anything your car will use. I'll give you all of this, and the bills will come to me. How you will enjoy that car... Think of driving it to school tomorrow. Think of all the new friends you will suddenly acquire. Your parents may be hesitant to let you use this car freely, so I will visit with them. I am sure they will be reluctant, but because of my position as one of the leaders of the church, they will consent. Let us imagine then that you have your car, everything to run it, and freedom to use it. Suppose that one evening you are invited to attend a church social. There are just enough of you to ride in my station wagon. You are just going to leave your car at home. When they come to take you to the party, you suddenly remember your new convertible with the top down parked at the curb. You run back in the house and give the car keys to your father, asking that he put it in the garage for it looks as if it may rain. Your father, of course, obediently agrees. Later, you come home and notice your car is not at the curb. Your old dad, always willing to help out. But as you walk up the driveway and the garage opens, you notice that it stands empty. You rush into the house, find father, and ask where your car is. Ah, I loaned it to someone. Then imagine conversations such as this. Well, who was it? Oh, that boy who comes by here regularly. What boy? Oh, I've seen him pass by here many times on his bike. What is his name? Oh, well, I'm afraid I didn't find that out. Where did he take the car? That really wasn't made clear. When will he bring it back? Well, there really wasn't any agreement on that. I need a car, I need a car! Why the heck did you use it? Okay. I suppose under the circumstances, you would look at your father with a puzzled expression and wonder if some important connection had slipped loose in his thinking mechanism. It would take a foolish father to lend such an expensive piece of equipment on an arrangement such as that, particularly a car that belonged to you. I am sure that you have anticipated the moral of this little illustration. It is in these years that dating begins, this custom of two sets of parents lending their teenagers to one another for the necessary and the important purpose of their finding their way into maturity and eventually into marriage. Dating leads to marriage. Marriage is a sacred religious covenant and in its most exalted expression may be an eternal covenant. Whatever preparation relates to marriage, whether it be personal or social, concerns us as members of the church. If you are mature enough to date, you are mature enough to accept without childish, juvenile argument their authority as parents to set rules of conduct for you. No sensible father would lend your new convertible to anybody, to go anywhere, to do anything, to come back anytime. If you are old enough to date, you are old enough to see the foolishness of parents who would lend their children on such an arrangement. Don't ask your parents to permit you, their most precious possession, to go out on such flimsy agreements.